Hey there guys, what's up? Welcome back to Mass Effect with Dude Long Couch. So, in today's video, we're gonna check out the Pinnacle Station DLC. Maybe... Good timing, Commander. Huh? We got a transmission coming in from the Citadel. Top priority clearance. Oh snap. Is it the Ambassador? It's not his signature. I think it's from the Council. I'll patch it through to the comm room. Oh, okay. Well, forget what I was just about to say. We got a call from the Citadel. That could be important. We should probably check that out. This is the comm room, right? Yeah. Commander Shepard, we've received information that may be critical to your mission against Saren. Good. I'll take all the help I can get. We've received an urgent message from one of our infiltration regiments in the Traverse. Infiltration regiments? Does that mean other Spectres? You mean spies. Spectres tend to attract attention, Commander. But they are only one arm of the Council. Oh. Special task groups are often a better option for monitoring developing situations. We currently have several infiltration units scattered throughout the border regions of Citadel space. This particular unit was gathering intel on Saren. Okay, cool. What did they find? Unfortunately, the message we received was little more than static. The infiltration team must be in a situation where they can't set up proper interstellar communications. But the message was sent on a channel reserved for mission critical communications. Whatever they were trying to tell us, we know it was important. Considering your interest in Saren, we thought you might want to investigate this. Find out what happened to our team. The signal originated from the planet Vermeer. Vermeer, okay. I'll look into it. The Council prefers not to become involved in the specifics of Spectre activities. We only want you to be aware of all your options, including Vermeer. Good luck, Commander Shepard. We will keep you advised if we learn anything else. Interesting. Another situation develops and another codex entry. Okay, let's go ahead and check that out. What do we get here, guys? Planets and locations. Theros is a Vermeer. Vermeer is a lush world located on the frontier of the Attican Traverse. Its vast seas and orbital position on the inner life zone have created a wide equatorial band of humid, tropical terrain. Only the political instability of the region has impeded efforts at colonization. Many times, the Citadel has opened negotiations to settle Vermeer with various criminal gangs and petty dictatorships in the nearby Terminus systems. All fell apart due to internal power shifts within the opposing parties. The Citadel has written off the colonization of Vermeer as impossible without significant political change. The Terminus powers themselves are unlikely to ever settle Vermeer. Most lack the resources to support settlement of a virgin world, finding it more expedient to steal from their neighbors than build for themselves. That is expediency. If I remember correctly, the Terminus systems are like the, uh, the outer rim world systems, right? The Terminus systems are located on the far side of the Attican Traverse. Beyond yeah, that's basically right. So Vermeer is basically a lawless wasteland that we have to go infiltrate to find this communication that was lost. Interesting. Stuff keeps popping up, guys. What I was going to say is that um, this Pinnacle Station DLC is, uh, from what I hear, like, you know, I don't like to, like, play it, play it up with you guys. I, I try to be straight. Apparently this content really sucks. <laughs> so I don't know if we're going to be here for a long, long time, but I do want to check it out for myself. Just see what it's about. I mean, if, if anything else, it might be good practice to uh, get me back into the swing of the game. I, I didn't play for about two weeks. Been missing a lot of time actually when it comes to this series for various reasons but um yeah i don't really want to get into that in this series but suffice to say i took a bit of a break and i just want to say thanks to everybody who replied to my social media posts and comments about why it's much appreciated so here's vermeyer century omega we'll probably go there after pinnacle station but i also want to I want to do that side quest with Rex, and I also want to go back to the Citadel, because it has been made known to me that it's a good idea to check in at the Citadel after, like, every kind of, like, main story quest you do, because, like, new stuff can be happening there. We have some side quests to turn in and whatnot. So basically, we have a lot to do, guys. So uh, I guess I'll stop wasting time and go here to Pinnacle Station. Hydra and Pinnacle Station over here. What's Hydra? I 
really never get tired of watching that. It's so cinematic. Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. Good God, I'm starting to hear that a lot. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. It's gone rogue? Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. I can't tell if this is a totally separate thing or if this is for the Pinnacle Station DLC. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Thanks. This sounds like it's going to be a great time. There's a bunch of new systems here to check out. Okay, let's start over here. Saiba. Saiba is a standard Neptune-type gas giant. The upper cloud decks of its hydrogen-helium atmosphere are tinted a dramatic blue by traces of methane. And scans from orbit have detected a large concentration of helium-3. Good. We need more helium on the Normandy. They are. They are is a large gas giant with traces of chlorine and sodium in its atmosphere. It also has a significant amount of water vapor in the clouds of its upper atmosphere. They are was struck by an asteroid at least 12 kilometers in diameter within the last hundred years. The superheating caused by the impact of atmospheric passage created a large bank of vicious storms along the equatorial bands. So not a very friendly place. Got it. I'm not even gonna bother to survey it. Varmalis. Varma, that's kind of a cool name. <laughs> Varmalis has a thick atmosphere of nitrogen and helium. Its surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of alumina with deposits of borax, whatever borax is. The planet has an extensive network of subterranean caves formed over the millennia by volcanic processes. In these relatively cool areas, some primitive life has developed. Alright. Not a lot going on here so far, it seems. Message coming in. Patching it through. General distress call from the Sacred Angel Medical Transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. Emergency landing. Cargo. Communications failing. Life support. Emergency transponder. Won't last. Please hurry. Huh. Okay, there's some shit going on on Planet Mechos. Um, let's actually zoom out, and then we'll go right back to that. Let's check out Canrum. Canrum is a small rocky world with a trace atmosphere of methane and krypton. Krypton? <laughs> its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deposits of carbon. Canrum was the site of the Warlord's... The Warlord Shiagar's defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during the Krogan Rebellions. While this band was not especially powerful, Shiagar was a female warlord, and one of the few remaining fertile females at that. She had, through viciousness and cunning, parlayed her unique value into a position of power. Krogan males competed for the right to join her band and lie with her. Damn. When Shiagar's death was announced, vengeful male Krogan admirers near and far swore blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousand of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or through assassination. To this day, many Krogan proudly proclaim that they have the blood of Shiagar. Yeah, I bet they do. They wish they did. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of the planet Canrum revealed dangerous levels of radiation coming from orbit. Chief Engineer Adams conducted further scans and discovered the remains of an ancient warhead marked with a Parthia colony insignia. Neat. Okay, so I don't really know what we're getting into here with this planet, guys. I mean, obviously it's a distress signal. I just don't know, like, the scope of this content. Is this part of the DLC? I mean, we're in the Pinnacle Station 
part of the galaxy. I just, I didn't think this was part of it. I'm confused, but we're just gonna jump in here and check it out anyway. The interesting thing, guys, is that, so this game came out in 2007, but the Pinnacle Station DLC didn't come out until 2009. It's like a full two years later. Uh, let's go with Liara and Garrus. I think this is gonna be my two different team build. It's gonna be Liara and Garrus, and then Rex and Talia. I think I'm just gonna kind of like swap them out, and then like maybe I'll use Caden and Ashley if it ever comes to that for some reason, but probably not. Level 2 hazard and a pretty barren world. We gotta find these fools and help them out. Let's check the map situation. So if there's an anomaly, transponder signal, and debris. Okay, let's go ahead and pop a save. And then I believe we will head north first and then just kind of swing back around and head down towards the transponder signal. Of course, that way looks like it's damn near impassable. Uh, let's swing this way. So yeah, the interesting thing is that Pinnacle Station DLC came out like a full two years after the game, which is kind of unheard of in these days. You know, you don't really ever hear of DLC coming out longer than like six months after a game, you know, after the base game came out. I can't remember the last time something like that happened. But even bearing that in mind, it was still kind of the early days of DLC, right? Like, just didn't have a lot of it back then. I mean, you, you saw game developers dipping into the concept of microtransactions, but they weren't really getting into, like, fully fleshed out DLC campaigns and extra story content like we have today. So, that probably explains why this is the way it is. It wasn't all that long after the infamous horse armor debacle in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. <laughs> if anybody remembers that. That was the first time people were, like, actually pissed off about DLC. And it's kind of funny because, like, back then the main uh, attitude was, like, you know, ah, DLC is price gouging gamers. We don't want it. Fuck off with that. And these days people are, like, mad if there's no DLC for a game. They're like, hey, where's my extra content? Give it to me. Force feed it to me down my throat. I want it. Wow, we can't hang out for long out here. Okay, let's recover this Turian corpse. This is an easy one. While searching the wreckage, you found a very old letter stamp with the Gothis colony insignia. Unfortunately, the text is indecipherable. Maybe a Turian could help us with that? Maybe? We really can't screw around out here for long, guys. Damn. Alright. Where to next? We should go hit the debris. That's right. That's where we're gonna go. And that'll be over yonder. I don't know, guys. I just think it's interesting to think about the landscape of gaming and how it evolves over the years. You know, I've been been a gamer pretty much my whole life, with little pockets of breaks here and there. But I've been pretty involved. I've paid attention to the industry for most of my life, and. And it's, it's just really interesting to me to see the way, like, values change and practices in the industry and the way gamers respond to things. DLC and microtransactions has kind of been one of the most interesting ones. I'm starting to get a lot of backlash now against, like, microtransactions specifically. There's been some interesting stuff going on with, like, Randy Pitchford, who is the CEO of Gearbox, makers of the Borderlands games. He got in some hot water recently, if you didn't hear anything about that. <laughs> he basically was at a presentation for Borderlands 3 and he said that there wouldn't be any microtransactions, then it came out that there would be cosmetic transactions, and he's like, but I didn't mean that, and it was a big fiasco. I don't know, Borderlands 3 still looks cool. I'll probably play it. But, I don't know. I think some of these practices are a little predatory sometimes. I think it just comes down to how they balance it out, right? What do we have here? Salvage. Good. Electronic skills too low. Should have brought Tali. Are you gonna... Are you gonna not let me back in here? There we go. <laughs> you 
know what would be nice is if it would tell you on the map if, like, you can't do something because your skill's too low before you go to the place. That would be the kind of quality of life improvement that I would like to see in Mass Effect 2. But, you know, I told you guys how, like, I had a little bit of experience with this game coming into it. So it's not like 100% blind. I kind of knew what to expect. I wasn't expecting some of the things that I've encountered. But with Mass Effect 2, I actually know almost, like, nothing about it. Like, literally, pretty much nothing. Except what people have told me in the sense that, like, it's, it's just a better game. Apparently it just plays a lot better. It feels a lot better. There's more quality of life stuff. So I am really excited to get to that, but I think we're... We're probably not even, like, halfway through this game at this point. We have a lot left to do. And going forward, I would like to try to play this game a little bit faster and get these videos out a little bit faster. There's been complications. There's always complications, you know. Sadly, I can't do this full time. So I'm not as fast as some other Let's Players when it comes to uploading content. I try my best. But it is what it is. Alright, we got a fresh save. Let's see what's going on with this transponder signal. Careful, Commander. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, me too. When you say anti-vehicle mine, that makes me very apprehensive. Can I just blow that up, I wonder? Hmm. Doesn't seem like I can actually take that mine out. I guess we just gotta go in on foot. But we gotta be really careful. Because we don't have a lot of air time out here. Oh shit. Get back in the... Get back in the car! Oh, I'm getting lit up. I'm getting lit up. Move, Mako! I gotta create some distance here and get into a spot where I can actually shoot accurately. There you are. I was gonna say, did they all go into stealth mode? What happened here? Gotta get some kills. Notice this guy. All right, all right. Still have a little bit of shields. We're still good here. Okay. Now, when you say anti-vehicle mine, does that mean that I won't set it off by walking over it myself? One should hope. Wait, is this all that was down here? Just the trap? I can't actually do anything with all that? I guess that was all we had to do down here. <laughs> that's like... That's so weird. Nothing happened down here. The whole point was just to come down here and get ambushed, I guess. I mean, we have... 
resources to mine and things like that. We successfully surveyed a large deposit of thorium. That's great. Money and XP is always a good thing. But I feel like I'm missing something here. And it's not a good feeling. I don't like it. I kind of want to run this thing over just to see what happens. You know what, guys? I'm going to do that. <laughs> We're going to see if this thing's like an instant kill or like what this does. That was it. That was the big scary anti-vehicle mine. Redeploying. Okay, well now that I've blown that up, now, uh, now can I interact with this? On, Commander. Right behind you, Shepard. Just lead the way. All right, I get it. There's nothing here. Going back to the ship. As soon as I remember the right buttons to do so. There we go. <laughs> well, that was a big W-O-T. It's a waste of time. And see, I feel like I missed something there, because we didn't even get any dialogue like, oh, well, that that was a whole that was a whole thing. That was a whole waste of time, right? Shouldn't have come here. Like, can't I call that dude back and be like, yo, this was this was just an ambush, it's not anything, don't worry about it. I guess not. Hopefully somebody will let me know if I'm missing something there. Anyways, let's actually go to Pinnacle Station for real. Got extra systems in here too. Silsalto is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. It has no remarkable features. That looks like Neptune up close. Did you guys know that sometimes Neptune is farther away from the sun than Pluto is? It's always taught that, like, Pluto's is, like, the farthest thing from the sun, right? At least in terms of, like, the traditional nine planets. I know Pluto's not a planet anymore. But it's always taught that, like, Neptune was number eight, Pluto was number nine, distance-wise. But they actually alternate in terms of which one's farther from the sun. Pretty interesting. Tuntau is an enormous, low-density terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere of methane and helium. Despite being nearly 20 AU from Phoenix, the star's great heat and the insulating thickness of the atmosphere make the surface surprisingly temperate. The crust is mainly composed of sodium and silicon dioxide with deposits of various light metals. While Tuntau is not habitable, the relative pleasantness of the surface conditions make it a popular location for small ships traveling through the Argus Row Cluster to land for dry discharge. Okay, I never actually read the numbers out loud, but sometimes I just like to scan them. Oh look, we can land here too! Look at that! I wonder why we would want to. Hitachi! is a sun-blasted terrestrial world whose atmosphere was blasted away millennia ago by the star Phoenix. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of iron with deposits of tin. Due to its relatively low density, Patashi is tightly locked to Phoenix. Seeds of molten light metals cover much of the sunward side. Sunward side. While scanning this planet, you detected a deposit of samarium. So when I do those surveys, it's giving me, like, XP, right? Intai say. An atmosphere similar to Earth's made Intai say an early candidate for human colonization. However, prohibitively high temperatures and an arid climate have proven a hindrance to terraforming in agriculture. A few human cities were founded, but the majority of the human population on Intai say remained scattered across the vast deserts, operating wind farms and geological research stations. The capital is Doro Mesa. It has a population of 150,000. That's not too shabby. Alright. So, we looked at that. Patashi is one we can land on, right? Then we've got these over here. Vebinok. Vebinok is a small terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of carbonaceous material, water, ice, and low-density silicates. Rare but concentrated, concentrated loads of light metals have been deposited by asteroid impacts. One hemisphere of Vebinok is covered by surface deposits of oxidized copper. Approximately 270 years ago, a Turian bulk gas transport was attacked by pirates in the Phoenix system. Damage and made a rough landing on Vebinok. The heating of the landing melted significant quantities of surface ice and ruptured shipping containers spilled blocks across the surface. Before this evaporated and escaped Vebinok's weak gravity, it, re it reacted to cause the widespread rust. Okay. Scans from orbit have detected a deposit of cobalt. That's actually a pretty interesting story, but I'm just like, I don't know what to take away from that. <laughs> it's interesting fiction. And uh, we did look at this one. Yeah, that's that's the Neptune-looking one. 
Um, let's see if there's any hidden things around here. Not really detecting any. That's not the one we can land on. It's this one. No, it's not. Toontail, there we go. Okay, this time, Tali's coming with me. Tali and Rex. I wonder if maybe this is the planet that has the transponder signal. Hidden structure? And an anomaly. Okay. Yeah, maybe that other place we went to was just a big red herring. Maybe this is the place we were supposed to come all along. Which would kind of explain why nothing really panned out over there. But don't hold your breath. <laughs> the side quests in this game haven't exactly been big on plot and conclusion. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll find out together, guys. I feel like they didn't have to make these planets this mountainous, though. Whoa, what is... What is going on down there? There's some shit going on down there, guys. Definitely have enemies. Alright, I'm just gonna jump in. We have a fresh save. Hello! Oh, I whiffed. I'm shooting him directly! Wow, okay. <laughs> I guess I was actually shooting over him, even though the reticule indicated otherwise. Perspective is a funny thing sometimes. Sniped. See what's going on in here. This is the place. My armor's here. What? Somewhere. What? I didn't know. I didn't know that's where we were going. <laughs> that's awesome. I completely stumbled onto this blind. I'm so happy right now. Oh shit, that's dope. Okay. Uh yeah, shotgun's good. This is going to be guarded by Krogans, right? Which means they're going to be some tough mother effers. These dudes are real gung-ho, I'll tell you that. Oh, they're all up top, aren't they? Nope! We got some down here. Alright. Why is his health bar white? Oh! These dudes, are, these dudes are playing it real safe. That's right though, you can't hide from my shotgun forever. Come on, dude. <laughs> Wait for him to pop out so I can hit him with a uh, warp. All right. I guess I shouldn't have just tried to go toe to toe with him right there. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of figured that. Uh... I figured that he'd go down faster than that. With like the extra warp damage and everything going on. about blocked the door for myself there. Uh, yeah, there we go. 
I was gonna say, if I actually block the door, that's gonna be really annoying. <laughs> this is the place. My armor's here somewhere. Okay, so I don't think we're actually gonna get to Pinnacle Station in this video, guys. But I'll do you one better. We're gonna find Rex's armor. Jesus. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. I can't get a good shot on any of these guys. They're actually very tactical. I gotta hand it to them. Bitch. All right, let's uh, let's do a little bit of this. And let's do a little bit of this. I don't even think that hit him. Oh, with the rockets. Probably gonna need some barrier. We're gonna hang back there. Finally. Okay, just two more. Rex has my back. We definitely got this. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Enemy is everywhere! You know what? Take a seat. Go, go, go! Okay. Shit, shit, shit. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I kinda hate these guys. <laughs> They're real squirrely. Jesus, don't do it. Don't do it, buddy. Oh, he almost did it, guys. He was so close to doing it. Sit the fuck down! Jesus. Dudes were strong, man. Okay. Now's a great time to hit a save, I would say. Now I see that the quest is leading me back that way, which means I have to go this way first. That's how it works. You guys know that. See, this place is laid out exactly the same as one of the last places we infiltrated on one of these random planets. It's that kind of stuff that sticks out to me and makes me feel like they just they didn't put a lot of time into these side quests. I will take all this stuff though. Proton rounds and cryo rounds? Alright. Alright, here we go. Whoop. <laughs> there we go. Tungsten rounds and incendiary rounds. Sure. This is it. I can't believe my ancestors ever wore this piece of crap. <laughs> but at least I've got it back. Whatever. <laughs> I'm glad we could help you get it back. I might just be starting to like you, Shepard. Rex touches his grandfather's armor, his expression thoughtful, perhaps? Krogan are hard to read. Then he shakes off his bemusement and grips his gun with renewed purpose. Time to move on. Well, I'm really, really glad that we made Rex happy. I gotta say, this, uh... 
the side quest kind of wasn't as cool as it was in my head. Ooh. Look at those biotic amps, guys. And I did get a um, medical interface 5. I'm not sure if that's an upgrade from what I have. Ooh, I got a lot of stuff, honestly. Heavy armor for humans, omni tools. Wow. Lots of good stuff. Okay. So, let me take a look here. Always fun to mess with this UI. I've got first aid interface 3. Medical interface 5. Gives me plus 2.7 health regen per second and plus 40% toxin resistance. That's fantastic. Decent upgrade for me right there. I will throw that on happily. Now for my pistol upgrades, I don't have anything on here and I still haven't found anything that I can get, so that's too bad. In terms of actual pistol upgrades, I don't have anything better. Same with the shotgun. How about my boy Rex? You give him a better pistol? I don't really have him using it all that often, but... Hey, why the hell not? And then for Tali, we should give her a new Omni tool, right? Oh, we already have the Cypher Tool 5. So, those are not upgrades. Okay, never mind. Good to know. Oh, and yeah, like... I assume that that armor isn't anything Rex can actually wear, right? It's just a quest thing. It's just a thing you do. Yeah. It's not a real item that you can have and hold and cherish till death do you part. It's just a quest thing. Wonder what's behind this door. More stuff that I can't do. <laughs> okay. High explosive five grenades. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out for a second here. Bear with me. Right now we have high explosive two. This is a bit of an upgrade. We're going from 13% and weapons force damage to plus 60. I completely butchered trying to explain this, but uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a decent upgrade on all those stats. <laughs> That's the main takeaway, guys. Oh, God. Okay. Sniper medium armor for Turian. Garrus might like that. Replenish the medigel. Uh, and a hardened crate that I just can't open. Uh, it makes me so sad every time that happens, guys. And because of that, this exclamation mark is going to hang around here. And it's going to forever be taunting me from the minimap saying, Haha, you can't do this unless you come back in like an unspecific amount of time. I have no idea. That's probably the most annoying part of it, honestly, is I have no idea when I will have a good enough decryption skill to actually come back and do that. Like, there's just no way to know. You just have to do it. <laughs> you just have to keep coming back and checking and hoping that you get lucky. Oh, well. So at least that's out of the way. I was kind of hoping for, like, some more story to that. Like, maybe confront the guy who stole it. And Rex would be like, My name is Erd not Rex. You stole my armor. Prepare to die. Or something cool like that. I don't know. It's... I thought that the side stuff in this game was going to be more... fleshed out, and it's really not... You guys might remember when I started this series, like, I I started by talking about, like, how I wanted to do everything. I wanted to take my time and see everything this game had to offer. But the more side stuff I do, the more I'm like, oh, it's kind of not worth it. And I don't mean to, like, shit talk the game, because I think it's a good game. But only in terms of the main story. Like, the main story missions are pretty cool. I always enjoy those. But the more time I spend the side content, the more I'm like, oh... That is really not what this game is about. And it's sad for me personally, because I tend to like side content in games. Like, I'm all about the side quests. I think they can really flesh out the world. They lead to interesting little stories. They usually have good rewards. And I don't know. This game's missing a lot of that stuff. So... Maybe I'll pick up the pace on the main story a little bit moving forward. I'm going to close out this planet 
Because I'm already here. I might as well grab this crap while I'm here, you know? But a lot of these Mako worlds are just kind of like... It kind of feels like you're spinning your wheels. Not really accomplishing much. Probe. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you, Mass Effect 1. It's very, very excellent of you. Alright, we got one more thing to examine over here. You know what's kind of dumb, guys? If you think about it, why don't we have a terrestrial vehicle that can also fly? It's like 200 years in the future, and we've got all this crazy-ass alien technology. Why do we rely on this stupid-ass Mako with its six wheels to, like, get around these planets with these giant, rocky surfaces? Like, I just want to fly over this stuff. It can't be that hard to make an air-capable vehicle that can carry, like, three people, right? Cover me. We have to hack the minerals, guys. That's how space exploration works. Heavy metal survey. Da -da 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 -da. Large positive mercury. Hey, level up. It was all worth it. Let's go ahead and do that now before I forget. I got two points. We're going to throw these points into shotguns. And I'm thinking specter training. Or I could do charm. Oh, I've been neglecting the vanguard tree too. This does pistol and shotgun damage and biotic protection. Um, you know what? I think specter is better overall. Yeah, that's smart. Let's throw the point in that. There we go. But at least I've been remembering to spam my saves. I already avoided one headache with that in this video. I feel pretty happy about that. I'm gonna try to keep doing that. You guys know that if this game was made today, There'd be, like, conversations happening on the Mako right now with our crew members, our squad mates. They'd be, like, talking to each other and having these back-and-forth dialogues. They'd be telling war stories and stories from their races, cultural stuff. It'd be cool shit. So it looks like we have a straight-up pyramid up here. This is not something I expected to find. That's not even the thing on the radar, though. What is this? Uh, okay. I don't know if this is something or nothing, but I'm actually going to save that for after we look at this, because this looks like a normal thing. Asari capsule. With a bunch of dead Asari, it looks like. Matriarch's writings recovered. You found one of Matriarch de la Naga's writings on this body. It's possible the writings came from the nearby ruins. Ah, we should probably check out the ruins then. Wait, is that going to be a place I can actually go into? It looks pretty tiny, but... Whoops. I did not expect to be able to run up the side. What the hell? <laughs> I guess this isn't a, a place to examine or explore. It's just here to look cool. And let you crawl all over it. It's like my own personal playground. It's 
so weird that they would design something like, like this, but then not let you go into it. I don't know, guys. Maybe my sensibilities are too modern. I, I kind of get faked out by some of the stuff in this game sometimes. I'm like, is this really the end of this little side quest? Because, like, nothing happened? Can I really not do anything here with this thing? It's weird, man. I, I Like, I feel like I'm missing stuff, but then I don't think I am rationally. But I can't shake that feeling where I'm like, should there be more to this? <laughs> it's really weird. Anyways, guys. All right, so this video didn't turn out how I planned. But uh, next time, next time we'll go to Pinnacle Station. <laughs> Even if it's just for a couple minutes just to check it out. We'll check it out, and then we'll um, move on to something probably more important and more exciting. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mass Effects. You guys take care.